Hello everybody. Uh, to prepare for your painting exercises, what we're going to need is a paint canvas and you can use tape or lines to separate into this configuration on your canvas to try all the exercises. What you're also going to need is a cup of water, glass cups are located by the sinks, and brushes. Maybe a small one and a large one, <clears throat> like that. Also paper towel to dry your brush, and a palette and colors. You're going to need black, white, and two colors that you would like to pick. You'll see there will be other areas to mix your paint. Uh, here are some things. Uh, also make sure you get smocks um, and they're located in the back of the room. Okay, exercise number one, tints and shades. What we're going to do is we're going to utilize this left section here and you want to break it up into 10 to 15 spaces so you can practice creating tints and shades. We're going to take our brush and wet it, dab it off with the paper towel. I'm going to take the green that I have and put it right in the middle, middle strip, just the green. Make sure not to get, take too much paint. Now we're going to mix some in the middle of the palette and grab a little bit of white and mix it into that little mixture and do another strip. You should see that it lightened up. Take about the same amount of white, mix in, and keep going up the paper and see how many tints you can get of the color. I'm using green, so I want to keep seeing lighter stripes of color. So I'm adding about the same amount or a little bit more white into the mixture every time. Notice I'm not using any more green, I'm just adding white. Here I'm just going to add mostly white with a touch of that mixture I had to get a really light frosty green and then just mostly white for that last one. So I did about six different tints there of green. Now I'm going to reinforce the green I put as the first strip and I'm going to make a little <clears throat> batch of it in this little palette area here and I'm going to take a dab of black and mix up the black and do a strip of that green. If it doesn't appear dark enough, add a touch more black and you should see a clear difference. A little more black for the next strip, even deeper, and go all the way till you get basically to pitch black again. And there you go, that's a value scale. Exercise number two, we're gonna create a gradient. So it's kind of like a value scale, pretty much is. Um, all we're gonna do is we're gonna try to mix them all together. Um, for this purpose, we're gonna use, we're gonna go from the green, so we're gonna apply some right here, and then I'm gonna clean the brush thoroughly, and I'm gonna grab white. So I'm just gonna go green to white. I'm, I'm gonna not use black right now. So I'm gonna fill in with the white, and you're gonna notice that I'm going to blend into the green a little bit. I'm gonna clean my brush, very important. Clean your brush, and then wipe and sweep from the white into the green, and then the green back into the white. And you should see a gradient occur. It might be a little sloppy like this at first, but if you clean your brush again and you do a quick wipe, it helps smoothen out the texture. When you do a first layer of paint, it's gonna be a little blotchy, but if you get the, this effect that I have right here, you're in really good shape. Exercise number three is color variation. We're gonna take one color and fade it into another. So it's kind of like the tinting and shading, except we're going from one color into another. So I'm gonna add this blue, just like I did the green in the last exercise. When I get about halfway across, I'm gonna clean my brush, dry it off, and I'm gonna grab green. Now you can pick any colors you want, but I'm using blue and green. And I'm gonna buff the green through the blue completely, and then I'm gonna work from the blue back into the green. Just quick strokes. You can see I'm getting the mix already. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to do a sweep effect again to try to smooth in the texture like you'd see in a sunset or in like an ombre like fade. You can always dry your brush again without any paint on the brush. Try to do a light sweep and that'll help smooth in the texture. Again, when you do a first layer of paint like this, it's not going to be perfect. Exercise four is we're going to do mark making with brushes. You can do a lot of things with brushes. There's a lot of types of brushes. There's round brushes, filberts, flat brushes, brights, all the types. So grab maybe one or two different ones. And mark making is about what can you do with the brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to do some dabbing or it's almost like stippling techniques. 
I'm taking some white, I laid it down, and now I'm dabbing in some blue. And you can see, wow, I'm getting fades of blue as they go into the white area. I take some of my green and dab that in. And by doing little dabs, I'm creating a really interesting texture. You can take, you can take any of the colors on your palette and try overlapping. This is my texture I'm creating. You can do anything else. You can do different line work. I'm just experimenting with a stipple technique, which is just subtle dabs. This might be really good for trees and leaves or like certain types of textures that you find in nature or just a fun abstract background. Coming back with a little white, softening some textures there. Bob Ross used this texture a lot, just so you guys know. When I feel pretty satisfied with just playing around with the paint, trying something different than just typical brush strokes, move on to step ex exercise number five, which is we're going to practice a color scheme. <clears throat> a color scheme is a group of colors that work a certain, um, that you'll see in a painting made a certain way. Um, I'm going to do a monochromatic color scheme, so I'm going to use blues, and I'm going to add blacks and whites to it. I'm kind of tra I'm drawing with the brush right here. You see these kind of like S-like curves I'm doing, uh, but there are other ones. There's other than monochromatic. There's analogous colors, which are colors next to each other. So such as yellow and green. If you paint with those, that means you have an analogous color scheme. Other color schemes are warm, which means like you're using yellows, oranges, and reds. And other color schemes are like cool, which means blues, greens, purples, like cool violets. Uh, there's tons of color schemes out there. Uh, so experiment with one. And again, I went monochromatic, which means I pick one color and I'm using blacks and whites to enhance it. I'm actually just kind of creating some buttery lines that are just overlapping each other. And while my paint's wet, the blacks and whites and blues that I add will smear together to create subtle fades and textural blends <clears throat> without much effort. And I'm drawing more than painting there. Um, exercise six is we're gonna paint over some areas and try some experimenting. So here um, I have two slots left in my uh, board surface and there I can play around with different color schemes. But what I can also do is go back over an old area I painted and do a second coat. And you're going to notice when you do a second coat after an area is completely dry, things appear smoother, things blend easier, um, and you get more finished results. That's one thing you have to understand about painting. Uh, you'll get more finished results um, when you add extra layers. So it's usually not one and done with uh, painting. So good luck, everybody. Uh, go for it and don't, don't be afraid.